Good morning. And thank you for coming to the Hawaii Business Council Voting Day Forum. For your information, this slide is also available at the YouTube channel in addition to the Zoom program. Before we begin this program, I just want to see if you want to go to our phone please turn it off or in silent mode. And for those who are on Zoom, would you please mute yourself? Thank you. Today's service will be officiated by Bishop Colson Ishikawa, HBC president, and attended by Bishop Kenjun Kawawaka, of Higashi Honganji, Bishop Eric Matsumoto of Pompa Honganji, Bishop Clark Watanabe of Koyasan Shingon Mission, Bishop Shogun, Shogun Tanaka of Tendai Mission, Bishop Shokai Tanai of Nichiling Mission, and Bishop Shugen. Tomagata of Submission. So if you are able to, would you please rise for the entrance of our bishop? Offering of incense and flowers by representatives of the Hawaii Buddhist Council Temple. We will now have the offering by the following HBC Temple. Tugashi Honganji Mission. Shigeru Namu Namuno and Vivian Takagaki. Honga Honganji, Dojun Baba, and Wayne Yoshioka.
Jodo Mission of Hawaii, Christine Inoue, and Zali Ishikawa. Shingon Mission, Mrs. Alan Watanabe. Nichiring Mission, Keith Nagai, and Claire Ariyoshi.
Good morning and hello. Uh, on behalf of our Women's Council, I'd like to welcome here to the nation and also thank you very much for coming to our introduction for the events. To have in person service is such a great experience after the COVID experience. Although we did a good job such as holding our online service. To, but as compared to two, in person service is amazing. You know, uh, really on myself, uh, after you know, daily Zoom meeting and Zoom serving, I easily forget what they thought. But if you attend in person at here the service, we feel with in Buddhism, we say we go six and we feel the sun. Not only just look or hear, we taste, feel, and smell the inside. That is the greatness of the person service. So I truly realize that after experiencing online doing service, to have in person service is just such a great thing. A decade ago, I was in charge of body service in Kauai, and my church was body service. And one time, I got a very impressive comment, and I don't know who told that because no, I no name. I think it was very honest opinion, and it says. 
I begin this morning with the story of Shakyamuni Buddha's awakening as told in the record of transmitting the light. Shakyamuni Buddha was on the sun lineage in India. At the age of 19, he leaped over the palace walls in the dead of the night. And at Mount Dantaloka, he cut off his hair. Subsequently, he practiced austerities for six years. Later, he sat on the adamantine seat where spiders 
spun webs in his eyebrows, and magpies built a nest on top of his head. Reeds grew up between his legs as he sat tranquilly erect without movement for six years. At the age of 30, on the eighth day of the 12th month, as the morning star appeared, he suddenly and profoundly awakened and said, I and all beings of the great earth in the same moment attain the way. Aloha and happy Bodhi Day to all of you. This is indeed a joyous occasion, and it is a great honor for me to be with the Hawaii Buddhist Council and to speak to you on this Bodhi Day. And thank you, Bishop Ishikawa, for inviting me. Whatever insight or inspiration I might be able to offer today is due entirely to the benevolence and wisdom of the Buddha and the good teachers I have had been fortunate enough to encounter in this lifetime. That is Robert Aitken Roshi and Nelson Foster. Thank you. What I'd like to explore with you this morning is that although we traditionally think of the Buddha as having lived 2,500 years ago, the awakening he is remembered for and revered for is not at all a historical matter. In our Japanese Buddhist traditions, as Bishop Ishikawa mentioned earlier, uh, we celebrate Bodhi Day as Jodo A. The Jo of Jodo A is the same as the last character in the fourth vow of the Shigo Segan Mon or four infinite vows. Butsudo Mujo Segan Jo. In English, Buddha ways without end, I vow to fulfill. In addition to fulfill, the Chinese character Jo also means to complete, to accomplish. The Do of Jo Do A is the Tao, the way, the Buddha way, the awakened way. And the A of Jo Do A means to come together, to meet as friends face to face. It, it also, in medieval Chinese usage, means to be able to, to be likely to, and to be sure to. Thus, Jodo commemorates not just the Buddhist awakening as a historical event, but that each of us may also come together with and meet this way of accomplishment. That is, the experience of awakening is possible for each of us, the Buddha showed this in his own life. He was a human being, just like you and me. To trust in the Buddha's awakening is to trust in our own potential for awakening through practice, be it zazen, nimbutsu practice, chanting the daimoku, or some other Buddhist practice. And as I am often reminding my own students, this trust is not trust to the exclusion of all questions and doubts. It is deep trust in the midst of questions and doubts, in the midst of uncertainty. Faith and trust are also, another way of speaking of them is as not knowing. If we knew, what need would there be for faith? 
Faith is not knowing. Faith and doubt work together, are not really different, just different words or different aspects of the same experience of life. With doubt and trust together, you are honest and vulnerable, and your Buddha nature is close at hand. In trusting yourself and your practice, you are able to forget yourself. And it is in forgetting the self that Jo Do, accomplishing the way, takes place. Faith and awakening are regarded by some as two different religious paths. In this mistaken view, the path of awakening may be touted as superior and the path of faith inferior or at best a preliminary step to the path of awakening. I can't speak for all the Buddhist paths represented here today, but I can certainly speak for the path of Zen. And this view has been soundly rejected by our Zen ancestors. And I'm mentioning faith again because that is the active element of our relationship with the Buddha's awakening. Yogin Zenji has said, it is imperative for those who practice the Buddha way to have faith in it. Because this faith is generated neither by forcing oneself nor by one's contrivance, neither by being coerced by others nor by fitting in a self-made norm. Faith has been imparted intimately through ancestors in India and China. Faith is so called when the entire body becomes faith itself. Faith is one with the fruit of awakening. The fruit of awakening is one with faith, with trust. If it is not the fruit of awakening, faith is not realized. On account of this, that faith is the entrance to the ocean of Dharma. Indeed, where faith is attained, there is the awakening of the Buddhas and ancestors. In this way, the trust and faith in the Buddha's awakening with which we celebrate our Bodhi Day ceremony today is not fundamentally about something that happened 2,500 years ago. Nor is it about something that will happen in the future. Our faith in Shakyamuni's great awakening is itself the living reality of that awakening here today. People often speak of faith as something that they have. You have faith or you lack faith. Uh, I think it would be much more accurate to say that faith and trust is how we do what we do. It's not so much something you can have as it is a way. So this talk was titled Bodhi, the way of awakening. Faith is the functioning of that awakening in our own lives, to whatever degree we have realized it. Faith is something to be practiced and lived, not something that can be possessed. Here's a story from my Zen tradition and, and many of yours, um, that some of you may know, that illustrates this matter. Zen master Baucho of Mount Mayu was fanning himself. A monk approached and said, Master, the nature of wind is constant, and there is no place that it does not reach. Why do you fan yourself? 
Although you understand that the nature of wind is constant, Boucher replied, you do not understand the meaning of its reaching everywhere. What is the meaning of its reaching everywhere, asked the monk. The master just fans. The monk bowed deeply. According to the account of the Buddha's awakening, which I read earlier, upon his awakening, Shakyamuni said, I and all beings of the great earth in the same moment attain the way. When is that moment? Awakening is sometimes talked about and thought of as an experience. Again, something someone could have, um, something that happened to someone, maybe a particular person at a particular time and place. This would be the conventional view and the idea of awakening as a goal, as a destination. It's okay as far as it goes, but it doesn't go very far in that way. It's always out there somewhere. What is awakening from the perspective of awakening itself? Shakyamuni said, I and all beings of the great earth in the same moment, attain the way. These are words spoken from the perspective of awakening. From the perspective of awakening itself, it is not you or I or Shakyamuni who awakens. There is only awakening, awakening. That's what awakening does. Awaken, awaken, awaken. It has never moved or changed, even a bit. Awakening. Shakyamuni said, I and all beings attain the way in the same moment. This awakening is a way, not simply a goal. And the faith that is the functioning of awakening also is the way of awakening. But fundamentally, awakening is a way, not a destination. Again, Dogen Zenji. I call on him a lot. <laughs> Speaking from the perspective of awakening itself expresses this clearly in the following passage about the act of bowing to the Buddha. Dogen said, at the time of bowing to the Buddha, the Buddha and our Buddha ancestors are not present side by side, not in a line, or collected in a group. They are not congregated. This bowing itself is face-to-face -face transmission of all the Buddha ancestors at the same time, in the same place. Masters and disciples always see one another in this way when transmitting the Dharma. This is the way of awakening. Fundamentally, then, it is not like taking one lamp and lighting another lamp with it, and then that lamp lighting another lamp, and so on in a succession. From the perspective of awakening itself, 
It is not like that. Rather, all the lamps are lit at once. One light, one lamp burning continuously throughout all space and time. Whether we realize it or not, it is still burning. In this way, our Jodo A is not so much about faith that Shakyamuni attained enlightenment 2,500 years ago, but rather our deep trust in the living fact of this awakening here and now in our own breath, in these beautiful anthuriums and orchids, radiant, in the smell of the incense, Good fortune to be able to be here together, to smell the incense, to see one another. This is Jodo A. The entire body becomes faith itself. Do you notice how the words I'm speaking are already gone the moment you hear them? And yet I'm speaking now, and you are hearing them. How is this possible? What is this life? My old teacher, Robert Aitken Roshi, used to say, our practice is not to clear up the mystery, but to make the mystery clear. When the mystery is clear, our deep and boundless faith also becomes clear. A monk once asked Master Mujo about Shakyamuni's awakening upon seeing the morning star. Mujo replied, why bring that up again? Hmm? Can't see them smiling. <laughs> why bring that up again? You might understand Mujo to be saying, why drag that idea of awakening around with you? It will only weigh you down. Don't you know that gold dust in the eye obscures the vision? Well, this is true enough. But I must tell you that if all there were to the Buddha Dharma was not clinging to ideas, we wouldn't be here today. So let me ask you, good people here today, how many awakenings have there been? What is it that we are celebrating here this morning? Wonderful to see you here today. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much, Rossi.
Oh, Michael Karen. Would you please rise if you are able to for the singing of Jodoe No Uta? It's uh, the last couple pages at the end of the quarter. On this Bodhidharma service commemorating and celebrating the enlightenment of Shakyamuni Buddha, let us all renew our vow to awaken the Buddha nature from our depths and encourage others to do the same. As the Buddha nature is awakened in all beings, little by little, it infinitely magnified the warm and comforting light of the Buddha Dharma. As the light becomes brighter and brighter, may it change the world of conflict, pain, and suffering to the world of peace, comfort, and ease. No maksang manda boda nam baku. Namu tai o kyo shu takamu nilema. This concludes the Hawaii Buddhist Council uh, 2022 Bodhi Day Service. We wish to thank Rossi Michael Curran for his wonderful Dharma talk today. And also to everyone who participated in today's service, all the bishops and ministers of the HBC temples and all the representatives who offered incense and flowers. And thank you everyone who are here with us in person and to those who are on YouTube or Zoom. Please take care, 
drive safely and continue to use facial masks, sanitizers, and wash your hands often. Aloha. Okay, once again, thank you so much, uh, Bishops and Bruce Michael, Minister, really thank you so much. We have water, we will uh, we need this make sure that we have water. Uh, hopefully, uh, our next service, analogy on April 3rd, which I will take you to, we have in person, then we raise men, fellowship and gathering. So we are hoping to have uh, we have no restriction service next time for our Once again, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'd like to take a photo of uh, these deaths uh, over here. Uh, also, I see uh, BDK flying uh, reports. Uh, BDK also provide free material books to all people. Thank you, Rukyo and Rukyo for providing such a generous gift for books. Thank you. And also, I love having you. Thank you so much. And in fact, in our next guest speaker for Hanamati, we will be Dr. George Tamate, the leading director. And once again, I love you so much. You can say.